Tom Cogswell from Horizon Hobbies Marketing Team, and I'm joined by our technical director, John Adams, for an AR637T Frequently Asked Questions video. And first off, I want to ask, with the 637T, when we mount the receiver, is there a particular position that we need to adhere to, or can we just put it anywhere? Yeah. Of course, when you said position, it's extremely important. In fact, it must be, you know, basically square. So it needs to be, you know, flat in one of the orientations that we talk about in the video. Okay. Um, people, though, frequently ask, does it need to be on the center of gravity? Right. So in an ideal perfect world, it would, especially if you're utilizing safe. But certainly if you offset it, you know, 12, even as much as 13, 14 inches away, it's not a problem, you know, above or below the center of gravity or, you know, to the right or to the left. So, you know, it would be great if it was right on the center of gravity, but we've flown the, these various um, safe receivers for an awful lot of years, literally thousands of them. And, you know, technically there's a difference with safe settings when accelerometers are being used, but, you know, you really can't tell a difference in flight. So, no, as long as it's mounted securely as we mentioned in the video it can't come loose and it needs to be you know flat and square hmm. okay all right um a lot of people like to ask and it, this is really a kind of a thing that goes with when we're talking about gyros can i use it in a gas or a glow yeah nitro plane absolutely so we you know 636s and our previous generation receivers have been used a lot in gas and glow power airplanes so in general yes there are some exceptions if you have an airplane that has a tremendous amount of vibration, it's a real good idea to soft mount it, meaning you know, on some rubber, um, either really thick foam tape or in foam. We've had some instances where guys are using these in pylon racers, and yes, for right now anyway, it is legal in pylon racers. Oh. And a couple of guys hard mounted them in fiberglass composite fuselages, and the propellers were out of balance, and they were having some problems. The sure. noise gets into the, um, the gyro itself, um, however, those same individuals soft mounted it and they found out that everything, you know, everything worked okay. So certainly in gas and glow, it's, it's no problem. We've got tons of customers using it already. We've tested the 637 in gas and glow. However, it's always a good idea to have that zero gain position so that you can turn it off. Okay. Um, you know, a switch position right. in flight mode or yeah, so you, just you, in case you never know. Yeah. You got it. Okay. Well, that's good. One question that I often get about the 637T is can we use the AS3X app to program it at all? Yeah, so actually one of the biggest complaints we've got about our previous generation receivers is the use with app or PC. Mm. So really nobody wants to take the darn PC with them to be able to program it. And the connectivity sometimes with the, with the Bluetooth device, with your mobile device, plus you have to get it out of your pocket, um, you know, you have to hook it up. So that's one of the main complaints we've had all along. That's why we came out with forward programming. Oh, okay. The fact is if you're flying, you're going to have your transmitter with you. Sure. And if you turn the thing on, it's going to connect anyway. So you just select forward programming. You know, this has been a request for a long time. Can we program everything from the transmitter? So that's essentially why forward programming was developed. And so it's much, much easier. The application, though, you know, there is a PC application to be able to register the receiver and also to update your receiver. So that's the current um, use for that. Right now, we have no plans to support the 637 with an application, you know, a PC application mm -hmm. or a mobile device application. Right now, there's, there's no demand for it. And, you know, everybody that's used this thus far says this is a much, much better way to go about it. Personally, I love it. And Me too. with it being everything that's in there forward programming wise, if you've used the app before, at least in my experience, it's synonymous with what's in forward programming. Absolutely. Priority works the same, the gains work the same. They do. And things like that. And in fact, most people find actually the layout's even easier. Yeah. So, yep. It's much more handy. So, yeah. sorry guys, the app doesn't work, but forward programming, it's the future. It is, it really is. So, let's say I'm a guy that has an old DX6i, mm -hmm. and I want to start utilizing this 637T. What are my options? Yeah, so the older generation transmitter um, you know, basically the Gen 1s, and there are only a few of them. Um, and we'll, we can put a list, you know, up right now if you'd like. You can, you can take a look and it'll show what we have. Mm -hmm. But those particular transmitters, they can be used with a 637T to fly the aircraft um, with a 637T that's already programmed. Right. So really what you need to do, we're going to have a whole bunch of ready-to-fly models that come pre-programmed, mm -hmm. and you can certainly bind and fly to those. 100% of those, that'll be fine. Yeah. One of the things that I remember with the, the AR636, and uh, I believe it even, even the 635 had this, is you, when you were trimming, you had to trim, 
and then wait a few moments. Is it, yeah. this, is it the same with this? Yeah, so the way that the trim function works, with AS3X specifically, um, of course you have priority, and priority has a, a sh you know, a, if, you, if you program much priority, it has a sharp edge to it, and heading hold as well. So, you know, the center of that position. So if you displace the trim, you know, it's not gonna be centered quite right. The way that the 637T works is any time that stick remains motionless for more than three seconds, it recaptures those center trims. Now you're not gonna see any trim offset, the trims aren't gonna change. It's the internal memory now recognizes that as the new standard trim positions and your heading hold, if you're using heading hold and your priority, will then be you know, reassigned so that it's accurately centered. Also, by the way, you know, the safe functions will all be um, re-centered and associated with that. Okay, so. so it accurately scales in real time. That's correct. Yep. Okay, yep. I like that. For cool. three second delay, yep, it'll... Yeah, so just like it, really. Yep, so. exactly. Trim it, wait three seconds, saves the new position. That's correct. You're good to go. And in reality, what happens is, is when you turn your airplane on, you know, there's generally three seconds of dead stick time before you get back and walk away, and so, yeah, so it so reloads it saves that. it then, too. Yep. Exactly. Cool. All right. Kind of along the same vein of trims and what you can do with your radio, is there any limitation with how low my dual rates can be? No, of course. So that's really the unique thing about this system is you're utilizing the programming in the transmitter. If you'll remember the 636, you actually, a lot of those settings were done in the receiver right, itself. Right, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you selected flight modes. In this case, you utilize the settings that are in the transmitter. However, anytime you make an adjustment in the transmitter, you know, travel adjust, especially servo reversing, mm -hmm. anything like that, wing type, obviously, right. there's a section in the forward programming for the AR637 that says relearn servo settings. Okay. You absolutely make those changes, make the dual rate settings, make those changes, and then go back in and relearn. Right. That's absolutely important. But you can lower your dual rate Big down time. 40%. Or and, and in want. fact, you know, a lot of aerobatic airplanes, you'll use 150% travel for 3D and you use, you know, literally 25% yeah, right. wheel rate for mm -hmm. normal flying. Yeah, stuff. that's yeah. normal, no problem. Okay, okay. Yep. Well, great, I like that a lot. All right, and lastly, this is probably the biggest thing from the 636, where you had to initialize it with the plane sitting right side up. Yeah. With the 637T, is that still the case? What would you prefer? I would love to be able to initialize it in any position that I, I agree. have it. And so the good news is that's the way this works. Now it still needs to remain motionless for approximately three uh, or four seconds. Okay. But you could literally set this upside down or on its side or whatever, as long as it's still mm -hmm. for three to four seconds, it will initialize. Okay. So yeah. Super. Cool. I love that. Okay. So if you guys have any more questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Me and John will get to them as we can. And if we see any other frequently asked questions, we may even do more videos on that. Absolutely. Looking so. forward to it. Thanks, John, for having us in Thanks, your guys. home. Yeah. RC from home. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So this is John and Tom signing off. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.